Hi, so I have a question for you. Do you have a sadness toolkit? If so, what's in it? <laughs> so I recently created a sadness toolkit for myself. It's not a literal box like a father's toolkit or a mama's toolkit. Anybody can have a toolkit. Um, mine is basically, I am a human who is a deep feeler. I feel joy immensely, but I also feel sadness just as intensely. And I know that as a menstruating human, for me, there's a time of the month where my hormones make me a little bit more cryy and kind of like, what is the purpose of existence? But I also know that when I experience unexpected sadness, like from a heartbreak, um, I, it can be really hard for me because I feel those things really intensely. And I used the phrase, I'm not emotionally strong yesterday. And I also have to remember that feeling things doesn't make you emotionally weak. It, it can be really healthy to process what you are feeling in the moment in a healthy way. And so in recognizing all of that, I have created a sadness toolkit for flows. So in my toolbox, I have exercise. So I jog at least once a week, but I jogged this morning with a friend because I am experiencing sadness in my chest place and in my belly place. And I know that movement and exercise really does a great deal for me in promoting my mood. Also hanging out with people who are really healing and who give me energy and who allow me to just talk and be in the moment. We didn't discuss what I'm sad about. We talked about all sorts of other life things as we jogged and that was tremendously healing for me. And we also talked about like sadness and life and grief and a lot of other things. So just having a trusted friend to do that with was really awesome. Sasha, my kitty cat, is also in my sadness toolkit. She's incredibly soft and she's so sweet and beautiful. And so when I'm feeling sad or cryy or down, I know that she is someone I can go to for pets and she loves pets. So I'm not <laughs> breaching a boundary. Uh, writing, like my notebook and my pen yesterday were such good friends because I went to it constantly throughout the day. I did lots of writing, I cried as I wrote, I wrote some more. Um, also having like really deep conversation, uh, conversations, a couple with my husband Jesse, who's aware of what I'm sad about and was in a space where he could hold space for me, I was really helpful and he's someone who is in my sadness toolkit who I know I can call and say, hey, this is how I'm feeling, do you have the space to talk about this? And he did yesterday and that was incredibly helpful. Good friends and community. I know I mentioned good people, but like a sense of community and finding ways to create purpose. Right now for me, that's Good Mood Food Palm Beach with my friend Mel. We did that yesterday. And it's also becoming a member of 1909 and having a professional community that really allows me to feel purposed in the work that I'm doing with Right to Heal and can challenge me and allow me to grow. Um, it's also Wise Tribe in this moment. Um, and movement in general, I mentioned exercise, but I also put on songs I love and I just kind of dance and sometimes I like ah, shake it out and I get angry and I do all of the things and that helps to get it out. And um, I also have deep breaths and meditation in my sadness toolkit. So like I took some really deep breaths yesterday. I didn't do any particular uh, breath technique. I just kind of laid on my back and I just took in really deep breaths all the way in. I used my diaphragm and I allowed myself to be fully present in my body and to identify the places where the sadness lives. Uh, and in this moment, it lives in my chest and in my belly and I'm aware of that. And I'm taking notice of how it's, it's moving and what it's doing. It's also real, realizing, okay, so I'm feeling this right now. I should make an appointment with my therapist so I sent her a text um, I'm sure she'll get back to me uh, sometime during the working week and we'll have a session and that will help me to continue processing my sadness so those are all of the things that are in my sadness toolkit and as a feeling human and a human who does feel pretty intensely and who uh, doesn't I, I don't do a good job of you know taking a thing and putting it in a box and putting it away it doesn't work for me and um, so just all of these things just allow me to process the sadness that I feel. So do you have a sadness toolkit? What's in it? <laughs> Sasha says she has one too. <laughs>